Well, hello everybody and welcome to scoreboard tutorial series for Minecraft for packet and spigot and paper. So in today's episode, I'll teach you how to create very amazing high pixel like looking scoreboards. Not only that, but I also have to make them update as you can see when I'm walking extremely quickly and without flickering. Let's crack into it. So first of all, we have our main plugins class from the entire tutorial series. And then I've pre pre created, excuse me, what's going on here? Okay, IntelliJ is funky. So I've pre created a board skeleton class. This is pretty much the same to the one that we have created in the timed tasks video. It is a free video in this tutorial tutorial series. If you need to refresh your knowledge how timed tasks work, please check that video out. I think I can leave a link to it in the description because we're going to be running the scoreboard update mechanism as a spinning infinite task. So this is a simple class. It implements runable. It has a, it is a singleton, right? So private constructor, it has a private singleton instance, and then it has the main method in which we're going to be running the logic to update the scoreboard for each player, as well as it has a static, um, a static getter to get the instance. Now make sure here, just duplicate the task field that we have again, let me say that again, mentioned uh, in the first video when we were creating time task, the link is in the description, but basically what I did, I just duplicated the, the field there and I duplicated this and I just changed the board uh, from butterfly task, right? So that's pretty much it. And then here I also duplicated this one. So if you don't have the code, just pause the video and implement this one. This is to prevent um, the task from running twice upon each reload. We're just going to cancel it. Okay. So that's it. Now, the way you're going to be creating these scoreboards, we're going to be creating two um, methods. The first one is called create new scoreboard for player. And then the other one is just going to be called update scoreboard for player. And before I hop on and I show you how to make it, if you struggle understanding what private void new scoreboard and these brackets are, you need to learn Java, right? Because Minecraft is based on Java and Minecraft plugins use Java. The best way to learn Java is check out the class that we have made for you guys. It's called Project Orion. Not only teaches you Java, but it specifically teaches you in a way where you can create Minecraft plugins. Plus it has seven weeks of content just for Minecraft plugins alone, meaning scoreboards, graphical user interfaces, menus, it has anti-cheats, it had mini games, how to sell a plugin, how to land a position at international companies. And it has a lot of cool stuff, including all the basics like advanced commands, permissions, settings, localization, and tons and tons of more. The link is in the description. If you don't like the class after 30 days, there's a money back guarantee on it. So you can just get your money back. And also me is sitting there personally with you twice per week to answer any questions on something called a live coaching call where you can actually get one-on-one -on -one attention, share your screen and request your code to be reviewed. So having said that, let's continue. We're going to be implementing this uh, method right here in the, as a scoreboard. So bucket already has a way to create scoreboards without, you know, NMS. If you don't know what NMS is, I'll make a video about it. So bucket has a very simple way to create a scoreboard. All we have to do, we got to go into the bucket class, get scoreboard manager, and then create a new scoreboard by calling get new scoreboard. Each scoreboard has an objective. An objective simply encapsulates, it holds the data. And the way you make an objective is you call scoreboard.register new one. And it has a name, so the name can be something unique, such as I'm just going to call the main class of the plugin and get the plugin's name. So this is essentially going to be our plugin's name, right? This is this, but I just want to call it from the plugin. I don't like to write strings when I don't have to. And then the criteria can be dummy. This can be anything, but I think the convention in bucket is just to write a dummy criteria. If you are a rebel, you can obviously write yummy or something like that. So that's the objective right there. We also have to set a display slot. That means where you want to show the scoreboard. It can be below name in the tap list or in the sidebar. In this video, I'm just going to be covering sidebars. So that's it. And you can also set a display name. As you could see in the beginning, it was cow prototype. 
and you can use chat colors ch chat color that yellow that chat color that bold to show it now the problem is you can't really use two chat colors after each other because java doesn't know how to join them because these are not strings these are actually enums so you have to use a an empty string in between for to help java you know split it so that's how we create an objective. The display name is going to be the title of the scoreboard. Now we have to set it to the player by calling player that set scoreboard. There we go. Now the way you create scores is you type in objective get score and then the entry of this score is actually the value which you want to show. Awesome. So that's how you can create these different scores. Let me just add some colors. There we go. Now, quick info. If you want to have multiple lines that are empty in the scoreboard, you have to space them out and you have to add a unique chat color to each line. So let me just add this red and this can be green. And don't worry, guys, because scoreboards can only have uh, can only have 16 lines. Let me show you this. So they can only go from 15 down to zero. Right. This is the score number on the right unfortunately you cannot hide this that's just how minecraft is rendered and then the actual score value is the text that we want to and then the the cow prototype is the title of the scoreboard so that's how to do it now if you just do this it's not going to do anything we have to actually set the line to it and the line has to be uh basically from the top so this one is going to be line number eight and then the other one is going to be Line number seven, you get a point. There we go. I have updated the lines. Now, the problem is when it comes to walked zero centimeter, this is pretty hard to update because essentially what you would have to do here is you would have to call this entire thing every single tick or every single time you want to update it, which is going to cause this scoreboard to flash. It's going to disappear and then appear again. We call it a a flicker and this is pretty annoying for the eyes and players may be susceptible to seizures when they see that so we do not want to do that so we're going to get rid of this line and the, the way we're going to show this line is using teams there we go team one and we can simply register a new team by calling scoreboard register new team the name of the team does not matter the, the issue here it has to be unique so make sure it is something unique team one and then we're going to add the entry to the team which essentially is just going to be a chat color that has to be unique so this essentially is the team key string team key just to make sure that you guys see it a little bit better and this entry works just like this entry on the score so team score is an entry is the same as here but except if you type in an entry say uh walked zero centimeter and you try to update it you are going to get the flicker again so we have to sort of hack this and the way we're going to call this walked right we have to actually use something called set prefix like this and then team one set the suffix is going to be actual the, the value that we want to show right so that's how it is it's a bit hacky but that's just the way the best way to update the scoreboard without any flicker whatsoever so the entry right here will now work just as a space right so i'm just gonna copy the the, the team key which is just an empty character an empty um chat color so you cannot see it here it is basically invisible and then after the invisible line will actually be the text so the text is going to show like games in this lobby but before we have the invisible color that's just a bit hacky but that's how it works so that's that now we have to then go to our objective get this score and then the entry has to be the same as the team key so bucket can recognize it and then we can set the score to zero so that it now shows at uh the line zero so again we're going to be creating a new, new team using prefix and suffix to update the information and then the team entry is basically the unique um entry the unique key on the scoreboard which is empty because we do not want to show it because of update problems and then we have to call the same score by the team key by the entry for bucket to simply place the appropriate team on the appropriate line like that hopefully that makes a bit sense it was extremely confusing when i started and i always made mistake of messing this up that's why i'm just putting the team key on top of it to make you guys a little bit more or less confused but i understand if it's still a bit confusing you're just gonna get used to it over time good so that's it now when it comes to updating the scoreboard very very similarly what we're going to do is we can just get the team right here. So we're going to get the scoreboard. Now, we're not going to want to create a new one. We're just going to get the old one from the player. We're going to get the team. Remember, this is the same key 
right? And then we're going to get the, no, we don't have to get a team key. Okay, AI is messing up here. And then we're, we're just going to update the suffix of the team. And to update the suffix, I can simply ask the player to return his statistics when it comes to walking one centimeter, right? And the reason I'm using brackets right here is that this is actually an integer and I can I can count walking and I can also count sprinting one centimeter. And at the end, I can just add uh, centimeters as, as a string. And before I've simply made this to be yellow. And in Java, again, it's going to be a bit weird. You cannot really join enums plus integers. You can only do that with enums plus strings. So we have to add an empty string right here. Awesome, guys. That's it. Now, the way we're going to show this scoreboard, we're simply going to iterate through all players that are online. And if the player already has a scoreboard and the player's scoreboard and the objective of the scoreboard by this name, by the unique plugin name is not null. That means that we can just update the player's scoreboard. Otherwise, we can create a new scoreboard for the player. This is important because multiple plugins can obviously have uh, already added as another scoreboard to the player. And this is really cool because you can simply create different scoreboards for different players depending on their permissions, right? So if the player has the board permission, for example, or if the player is in a specific world, you can get the world name equals to say mini games, right? So you can do that if you want to, and you can just have different conditions sh sh showing different scoreboards for the player. Let me jump into the game and let me show you how everything works. Awesome. Now in the game, as you can see, everything works correctly, except the vault doesn't have a space. So what you can do, you can simply type in the prefix and then add a space right after it. And if I restart everything, I don't bother to do that. Uh, it's going to show up properly. So this is it. This is how it works. You can see it updates extremely quickly and there is absolutely zero flashing. Now on that note, before I end this video, I do want to mention the period is set to way too low and it may have a performance impact on your plugin. So I always recommend you guys up the period to at least 20, which means the scoreboard will update once, <clears throat> once per second. So updates once per second, right? Or you can even do say uh, once per 30 seconds, which means two times a minute, right? Obviously I do not recommend that because you have to wait to see a new score, but I think once per second is just fine. So the higher the score, the less lag, because if you call update scoreboard and this one, has to load the scoreboard. This one has to find the team. This one has to find statistics. It doesn't take a lot of performance, but if, you, if you're gonna do it every ticks, which means 20 times per second, then it will add up on your performance penalty and your plugin will lack a bit. So I just recommend this, especially if you have many, many players. If you have over 100 players, make sure this update is as high as you can bear. All right, guys, this is it for this video. Again, if you want to learn way, way, way more than YouTube can let me do because I can, there's only so much that I can show you on YouTube. Check Project Orient Training. It is the most comprehensive and the best training for Minecraft plugin development. Specifically, we cover Bucket, Paper, Spigot, Bungie Cord. We even cover APIs, libraries. We cover different other plugins such as Protocol Library, place or Placeholder API and stuff like that. And we also cover how to make Bungie Cords plugins, which is really, really amazing. Uh, the link, it will be in the description. You can join the class if you want to by learning more about it, read the page, see if you like it. Again, there's 30 day money back guarantee and there's myself on there twice per week on live calls where you can actually unmute yourself. You can share your screen like I do and I can have a look and I can help you with your code specifically with your plugin. So again, I invite you guys to check the class out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.